Jesus. Welcome to the Hamer Connect. Today we're talking with one of our participants in the 28th annual Hamer Memorial Symposium. We are not afraid. Youth activism in the Mississippi freedom struggle. Mr. Albert Sykes. Welcome. Thank you, Keith. Mr. Sykes, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do here in the city of Jackson. So I'm Albert Sykes, I'm the lead organizer for the Young People's Project here in Jackson. I've been a part of the Young People's Project since it was founded at Brinkley Middle School in 1997. Um, I'm a student of Bob Moses in the Algebra Project, so he was my math teacher in middle school and high school, so I had a lot of time to not only learn math from him, but to also learn parts of the Mississippi struggle and to be able to come face to face with some of the folks who helped him live and and become a part of Mississippi in the 60s. Okay. Now, having been asked to participate on this symposium, why do you feel it is important to have our young people participate in this year's session? Well, I think it's important because it focuses on young people. Um, when you're talking about the youth struggle and definitely the youth um, power and movement. So, looking back, into the 60s and up until now, one of the biggest sources of energy for any movement has been young people. So when you look at the Freedom Riders and you look at other folks, um, like Dr. Ladner, who was a young person when she became a part of the movement, then also looking at folks who are out in the communities building today, like Jason Thompson, who's also participating on the panel, who's a local hip hop artist, and he's also a community oriented person who does a lot of things. Uh, not just in the city of Jackson, but across the state of Mississippi and other places in the U.S. And then also, I think, um, having folks like Shauna David, who's also participating this year, um, should be a big boost for young people to come out and see folks who are not too much older than them that's actually out here trying to be a part of, of building a movement for better communities, better schools, and, and a better state for the black race. Okay. What are some of the issues that our young people can rally around today? Uh, at the top of my list is always education. I think that's the place where more young, where the most young people are and where you can um, impact the most young people. And so definitely when you're looking at the direct correlation between the lives that young people are able to go on and live and the education that they're receiving, uh, I think that that's a place that we have to begin to wake young people up and to put young people in a position to be able to control and help make decisions around education. And so it's something that's going to impact the rest of their lives, whether they receive it or not. And then I also think incarceration, when you're talking about the amounts of young folks that's being incarcerated today and the amount of young folks that's being incarcerated directly from the schoolhouse. So talking about schoolhouse to jailhouse. And then also looking at uh, incarceration in the black community as a whole and the fact that we have African American men that make up a disproportionate amount of inmates across the country. And then black people as a whole make up a very small amount of the total population of our country. So um, education and incarceration and inclusion with other topics like health care and healthy communities are, are things that I think are very important and that young people would easily be able to rally around. Okay. Being a young man yourself and listening to you talk, you seem so passionate about what you're talking about. Who or what inspired uh, your activism? So um, definitely Mega Evers. Um, coming from the community of Shady Oaks, I grew up one street over from where Mega Evers uh, lived with his family and also where he was killed. And so 
his story was always a part of my upbringing. So my mom and my grandmother and folks in my family shared with me who he was and some of the sacrifices that he made. And so for me, I was always, I always saw him as sort of a hero, as a person who came from where I came from and sacrificed in the way that he did. And looking at the change that came out of him giving his life and definitely uh, Bob Moses. So the amount of time I was able to spend with him uh, learning from him about some of the things that he was able to be a part of in Mississippi, but more so learning from him about the real everyday folks on the ground who he worked with who really uh, impacted change in Mississippi, such as Fannie Lou Hamer. And just the big moment <clears throat> that I remember with her was uh, her speaking with the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party and talking about the things that were happening on the ground with black people in Mississippi and just seeing that her story was so passionate and so powerful um, that the President of the United States cut in in the middle of her speech in order to keep America from being mm -hmm. shaken by the words of this black woman from Mississippi who was telling not only her truth but the truth of so many other people who were in the room with her and who couldn't make it to uh, Atlantic City to participate. Mm. Touching, touching. Now, as a youth activist today, what type of legacy would you like to leave behind? Yeah, so I would definitely want my legacy to be a direct reflection of the three people that I just mentioned. So with each of those three people, you can think of several folks who've um, gone on and touched other people's lives just by being touched by those three people's lives. And then definitely with Bob, thinking about the way that Ella Baker touched his life and the way that he showed up in my life, I mean, Ella Baker is touching me in the same way that she touched Bob. And so for me to be able to go on and help young people and put people in a position to, um, to reflect me and also to reflect themselves and their communities in a positive way I think is the best legacy you can have is is a legacy of folks who come behind you that's empowered to keep the work going. Well there you have it people. Mr. Albert Sykes, one of this year's participants in the 28th annual Hamer Memorial Symposium. Get on board with us for the 28th annual Hamer Memorial Symposium. Just get on.